Hey everyone, welcome back to another Permaslug episode. My name is Jonathan, and today what I'm gonna do is walk you through how you can style Contact Form 7 in Oxygen with no CSS and no hand coding of any kind. Contact Form 7 is extremely popular, and I've had people ask me about it very frequently, probably because it's one of the few decent free Contact Form plugins, or perhaps it's you know the most ubiquitous. And what I did here was set up just a simple demo site. You can see these forms definitely look a little bit different than they do right out of the box. There's that nice hover effect. If you click on it, it activates that box shadow and it's got that kind of fade in and out transition. You have your send button full width here with that same kind of box shadow effect. And this is all really simple to achieve. I'm gonna close out of these two tabs here and move into this oxygen install that I have set up. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your oxygen settings and turn on selector detector. If you're not familiar with that, I'm gonna give you a brief crash course in it and it will become probably a pretty important asset for you when you're building oxygen websites. So go ahead and enable that and click on save. And then of course we need to add contact form seven. I'm gonna go ahead and add the plugin and jump to the next step. All right, so I have Contact Form 7 installed and I'm just gonna take the default form that it spits out for you, take this short code, and we're gonna go ahead and just go to our pages here and I'm going to edit my Contact Us page with Oxygen to get started. So to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna add a default kind of design element from the library. So I'm gonna go Design Sets, Atomic, and then under Pages, there is a contact page somewhere in here. Let me scroll down and try to find that. Here, I'm just gonna use this except to kind of replicate the design that you guys saw earlier, I'm gonna delete this whole column right here. I'm going to center this particular div, and then all of this stuff we can just go ahead and delete. It'd actually be a bit easier if I open my structure panel, and then uh, you can just go ahead and delete the heading and the text. Inside of this div here, what I'm gonna do is add a shortcode element, and then I'm going to paste in the contact form seven shortcode. You can see that this stuff looks extremely rudimentary right out of the box, doesn't look that great, but we can easily fix that. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set this short code to have a width of 100%. So I'm gonna set that to take up all the available space in the container. And this is centered because this div right here is set to center. So all I need to do is set this to left align like that, and then it's gonna push our content to the left as well as you know the text and the inputs. The other thing is there's a lot of padding in this, so I'm basically just gonna chop this in half. So the top and bottom padding I'm gonna set to 60 pixels, and that will be perfectly sufficient for now. So because we enabled selector detector, if you click on a short code, you're gonna notice there is this new style output button down here. This is what's going to effectively activate selector detector. So if I click on this, what I need to do is highlight a selector in here, and you can see there's these green fields that pop up, and that's going to basically choose the selector that then I can style in Oxygen. So if I click on one of these inputs, it gives you all you know the CSS hierarchy all the way down to this particular input. Now, if you're not familiar with CSS, this can be a little bit intimidating, but what you need to make sure is that you choose the right combination of selectors here. If you choose one that's too far down, this is going to apply to any input across your entire site. So if you have input fields from other plugins such as MemberPress or Gravity Forms or you know any other plugin that has that input field, then the styling changes you make here will also apply there. The way to fix that is to basically just choose an item up above this. So I'm gonna choose this one here, so WP CF7 form control wrap and the input. You'll notice that up here my selector has now changed, so it's a little bit hard to read it all, but it has that same input, and now I have all three of these inputs selected. So what I can do from this point is go ahead and just click on my advanced tab here and start editing the styling of these inputs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to size and spacing, and I'm gonna set the padding to like, let's say 15 pixels top and bottom, and then We'll just go ahead and do 15 pixels all the way around actually. This gives us a nice amount of padding between our text and the edges of the content. You're probably gonna wanna look at these changes fairly often and what you'll find is difficult initially is to get back to that selector. So if you went back to style output and you have this pre-selected, sometimes it's not selected. So what I find is actually much easier to return to where you were just working is to go to manage selectors Got to go through a couple different drop downs here, but click on uncategorized custom selectors, and there is the selector we were just editing. Now I can go back to the advanced tab here, and it's just a much more clean way to get back to what you were working with, so you don't accidentally overwrite. Now let's say you do make a mistake, and for some reason you accidentally select the wrong selector, or you do a styling mistake of some kind that you're not happy with, you can simply just use the built-in oxygen undo feature, and that will work for you perfectly fine. 
So a couple of styling things I'm gonna do to these input fields here is I'm gonna go to the advanced tab. Under the borders, I'm gonna make this a much lighter color instead of just the standard black. So I'm gonna set this hex color to BC, just like that, set it to a width of one, and then set the border style to solid. And then the border radius, I'm going to set to eight pixels like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is go to advanced, effects, transition, and set this transition duration to 0.2 seconds. And then our timing function will be ease in out like that. And you wanna make sure to do this to the original state and not the hover state so that the transition effect takes place in both directions when you hover and when you activate a given input. Now what I can do is actually switch over to my hover state and then I'm gonna to go to advanced borders. I'm gonna set this border to something like 666 like that, solid and one pixel. And I don't need to mess with the border radius because that's not gonna change whenever I'm hovering over the field. Now the other thing I can do while I'm still in the hover state is go to advanced effects and set a box shadow here. So I typically just make it black, drop the opacity to about 20%, and then I just go like zero, 10, 20, oops, zero like that. I'm gonna go ahead and save and let's take a look on the front end real quick. So now you can see when I hover over this, it does have that nice box shadow effect. Although there is this outline border, which I believe comes from Chrome. So I'll show you a way that you can really easily get rid of that. Now, of course, you'll notice the styling effects we've done so far to these inputs don't apply to this text area, and we're gonna have to basically do this styling again. This is one of the disadvantages of setting it up using Selector Detector, but the benefit here is that you don't have to do any hand coding, and of course, if you don't know any CSS, this just makes it so simple. I'm gonna jump back into the Oxygen Editor, and one thing I wanna do on these inputs is add some margin to space the fields away from the, the label there. So I need to make sure I'm back in my original state, go to advanced size and spacing, and I'm gonna set the margin on the top to like 15 pixels. That may actually be a little bit too much. Let's drop that down to 10, and that's starting to look perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do at this point is go to advanced typography. I'm gonna set the font family to what I have chosen for this site, which is Poppins. I'm gonna set the font size to 18 pixels. Our color, let's set to something like a dark black like that. And then our font weight will choose 400, which I don't think is gonna make much of an impact at this point. But just for the sake of example, we can take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna save this and let's actually type something in one of these fields now. So you can see there's a bit of extra breathing room in these fields, I really like that. So I'm gonna select this and just type my name. That looks perfectly fine. Okay, so now let's go back to the visual editor here and let's get this input field. So the simplest thing is going to be click somewhere in the short code that doesn't have some kind of activation. Don't click in one of the inputs. Just click in this white space out here so you get your style output button again. And then all I need to do is click on this input here. You can see it highlights text area, but go ahead and add in this form control wrap like that. So now you have WPCF7 form control wrap text area. And we're basically just gonna do all of that styling again. So I'm gonna go to advanced, size and spacing, 15 pixels all the way around. And if you notice, now that I've started editing this selector, this one is available over here. So if I wanna switch back to my inputs, I can do that. And then if I need to go make changes to the text area, I can certainly do that as well. Same thing as last time, we're gonna set the border to BC, solid one pixel border radius of eight. Set the hover border to, I believe we did 666. And then solid one pixel like that. Moving back to our original state, I'm gonna add that same effect. So effect transition 0.2 seconds. The timing function will be ease in out like that. And then we're gonna go back to the effects tab, go to box shadow. Once again, just set it to black, drop that down to about 15%. Actually it was 20%, not 15. And then zero, 10, 20, zero is what I did. I just realized I made a mistake and attached this box shadow to the original state. So I'm gonna clear all this stuff out and throw it back in the hover state where it belongs. So zero, 10, 20, zero like that. And then of course these form fields are not aligned in terms of width. So what I'm gonna do is basically just set this one's width to 100%. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the inputs here. Just set those inputs to a width of 100%. Interestingly, my text area didn't save that width. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I set the text area to a width of 100% on hover. <laughs> so there's a demonstration of just being careful as to what state you have your uh, you know changes taking effect in. So let's go back to this text area. We're gonna go back to hover. The width in this case, we don't want to be 100% just on hover. We want it in the original state width of 100% like that. 
Okay, so now that's starting to turn into a decent looking form. I'm gonna save this. Let's go take a look on the front end again. And now our form is starting to look fairly reasonable. One thing that I don't really like is the way that when you click on this field, it highlights that super dark black border. So I have some really simple CSS that we can throw in just to show you what it would look like if you get rid of that. So if we come back over here, I'm gonna go back to my structure panel and click on my short code. We're gonna add in a code block here. Under the PHP, you can basically just comment out this echo. Go back to the primary tab and click on CSS. I'm gonna paste in this CSS here that I have. Super simple, you can basically just copy and paste this and I'll put it in the description below for you. And what that's gonna do is if I save and then go take a look at this on the front end, now it's just gonna have that border that we set as our darker border hover color instead of having that super thick outline color. In terms of continuity here, we added 10 pixels of margin to the top of this input, but that didn't carry over to our text area there. So we can go ahead and just go back to our manage, selectors, go to the text area, and I'm gonna add 10 pixels of margin to the top of that. So that's starting to look pretty good. So now what we need to do is style this send button. So again, click in my short code and some of the white space, choose style output, click on this send button, and this is gonna put us on the input. So once again, we don't really want this, what I'm gonna change this to is WPCF7 input, and that's gonna make sure that these styling changes that we do only apply to this send button. So this one's gonna be pretty simple. Let's go to advanced background, and we're gonna set the background color to our global teal, or blue, I guess in this case. Go back to advanced, I'm gonna do size and spacing, and let's set 25 pixels of margin to the left and right, and then like 12 to the top and bottom. I'm gonna set the width here to 100%. Go to the advanced tab again and choose typography, I'm gonna change this color to white, the font family to Poppins, font size to 18 pixels, font weight, let's do 500. Letter spacing, I'm gonna try two, that looks reasonable enough, and then text transform, let's go uppercase. Again, go to the advanced tab and let's choose borders. I'm gonna set the color to be our same global color there. A width of one pixel, solid, and there you can see now it's gotten rid of that hideous default border that is typically on that button. The other thing to be consistent with our other fields here is I'm gonna set a border radius of eight pixels so it has a nice little rounded edge to it. And then I'm gonna to go to advanced effects, transition, 0.2 seconds, and you guessed it, ease in out is gonna be our timing function there. Then I'm gonna to switch to our hover state, go to advanced effects, box shadow, same exact thing again, just go to black and set that to about 20% opacity, and then 0, 10, 20. Gosh, I type nine every single time. 0, 10, 20 like that. And now if I save this and go take a look on the front end, our send button starts to look really nice. So when you hover over the send, it has that really nice kind of box shadow effect behind it. So as you can see, this form is really nice looking. We didn't have to do any coding except pasting in that stuff that I provided for you. And this looks a million times better than Contact Form 7 does right out of the box. Now in terms of the downside to this particular method, like I already showed you, you are gonna have to repeat some of the styling efforts just to be safe to make sure you're not overriding changes on yourself with those selectors. So just be really careful and take your time. Utilize Oxygen's built-in undo function because it's gonna help you a heck of a lot when you make a mistake. So don't go too quickly and you can just step backward using Oxygen's undo. One other thing that you need to be mindful of is making sure that you set the widths on these fields to 100% or whatever your width is at the lower breakpoint so that it is responsive. So all you really need to do is drop down to like less than 992, just ensure that everything kind of fits. We've already set the width of those fields to 100%, but just double check and if you need to make the change at the responsive breakpoints, you can certainly do that and all your changes will carry over just fine. The other thing that I wanted to show you is sometimes selector detector can be a little quirky. So if you want, what you can do is go on the front end in Chrome, right click in a field and choose inspect. Then over here in your styles field, if you look, this is one of the selectors that we were just working with. So you could realistically take all of this CSS, paste it in your code block, and then you have almost like a backup of that CSS there. This is basically all of what we did just translated into proper CSS. And then you can also force the hover state here. So if we click on that, then it's gonna show you the CSS that we set for those fields on the hover state, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna close this and jump back into the oxygen editor because I wanna show you how you can add your own pseudo class to these fields. So if I come back here, just make sure I have my input selected. I'm gonna go back to the state here and then I'm just gonna add the pseudo name focus like that and then click on okay. And then what I can do is just go ahead and make sure I click on focus here. If I go to advanced, 
borders, and then just do the same border that I did before, that 666 solid one pixel. And I save this. Let me show you what that looks like on the front end because it's pretty cool. So of course, if we hover over it, it changes to our dark color. And then if I click in it, it's going to maintain that dark color even if I move my mouse off so it's no longer selected. This is great on mobile devices because of course you're not gonna be able to hover over it on a phone or a tablet. But if you click in it, it's going to highlight it to give you a little bit more of an indication that that is the field you're working in, which is super cool. So once again, to show you how it would work Without that, if I click on this and move my mouse out, the only way that you would know that you're in this field is your cursor blinking, which may not be super ideal. So you can add that selector again. One more time just to show you, I'm gonna go over here to the text area. I'm gonna go to the state, add state, and then this one is just called focus. We're still in the advanced border tab here, which makes it super easy. So just set that to 666, solid one pixel, and there you go. So now if we go over here and refresh, then sure enough, we have that same effect there, which is super cool. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in a future video.